Um, and we move on to the second speaker of today, uh, and that is Yuri Tiding. Um, he is a psychiatrist and also associate professor of research integrity in two departments. Um, one is philosophy, and the other one uh, is the department chaired by Mariette van der Halve on ethics, law, and medical humanities, uh, both in Amsterdam. Um, and he's also a work package leader of one of the European um, uh, funded Horizon 2020 programs called Stops for RI, Standard Operating Procedures for RI. And in that project, in that huge consortium, we make guidelines for research institutes and for funding agencies on how to promote responsible research practices. But Today's topic is one of his favorites, and it's about um, supervision and how to empower supervisions to do the right thing for the supervisees and, and help them to engage in responsible research practices. Um, Yuri, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to get my, the, uh, the, this one. I need this one to, uh, to move on to the slide. Thank you so much, uh, Lex, for this uh, kind introduction. And also thank you uh, very much, uh, Enrin uh, and Doreen specifically, for inviting me to give this talk on uh, super, uh, sup supervision in academia. Um, I, have to, uh, I have to start, of course, to uh, say, well, I'm a big... Uh, fan of supervision. I think supervision is one of the key elements in uh, how we can make academia a little bit better and how we can make research better and more reliable. And therefore, um, uh, I have to say this because I'm, I'm going to be talking positive about uh, the importance of uh, supervision. So that's uh, some sort of uh, 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 not a conflicting interest, but it is an interest. And secondly, I've seen it from, uh, uh, from an other perspective as well. How how important supervisors are. And then I refer to my training as a psychiatrist. Um, it has always been a big, big learning curve when you, when you work with professors or with a senior psychiatrist who do the trick, who, show, show, who had showed me how to become a better psychiatrist. And supervision in academia, and uh, specifically supervision of PhD students, is actually focusing on this. And, that, and that's why supervision is so important, because you, you, you need those supervisors that, that show you, that give you the right example, that, 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 is gonna, that, that are helping you to become a better and more responsible researcher. So having said this, uh, let's, uh, let's mo move on to this talk. What are we going to discuss today? So I'm, I'm going to briefly outline what I consider uh, uh, responsible supervision. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit why I think it is important. Uh, I'm going to take you uh, in my thought process, uh, take you with me in my thought process to discuss a little, uh, some studies that we already did. One of them is the superb supervision course Mariette just uh, referred to. And the other one are the guidelines indeed of uh, um, uh, of the uh, of the SOPS for I project that are specifically targeting supervision, uh, and then uh, hopefully we can have some discussions and we can also look towards the future. What 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 is needed actually to make supervision even more important in academia? Because I also believe that there are a lot of really good supervisors out there that do a magnificent job to train their PhD students really well. But I also know that there are also some lousy supervisors out there that hardly give a lot of attention to, uh, to, to supervisees or to their PhD students. So I start with my take-home messages. I, uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm not always doing this, but I think <laughs> these are the six, uh, six points that I would really like to make. So after my talk, I hope you, you, you know a little bit more about these uh, uh, things. Of course, that we can do a lot uh, to make supervision better, uh, that we are leading and learning by example, uh, so that we really need good supervisors, responsible supervisors, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to learn, specifically for PhD students. Uh, supervision is pivotal in, uh, in conveying research integrity, pivotal in, in conveying research integrity. Institutions can take a more prominent role in putting supervision on the pedestal of, uh, as key ingredient of res responsible research. And I think this is also very important that oftentimes 
uh, institutions do not take this role. Uh, and they consider it an individual responsibility, but it, uh, it goes hand in hand, both the individual responsibility, but also the uh, institutional uh, uh, responsibility. And don't forget, um, I think supervision is one of the most fun parts of, of doing research, because you do it together, you need to collaborate, sometimes you need to lead, sometimes you need to follow. You're learning a lot from your younger students, uh, because they sometimes they know more of you uh, there's a lot of there's so much it, it entails so much so uh, that's uh, don't forget that it's a lot of fun so what is it uh, we start with what is exactly responsible uh, supervision what I consider responsible supervision well Bert in in 2001 describes as a formal role and regards the responsibility for guiding the PhD candidate to obtaining a the PhD degree well that's that's like the very small definition of it and I think that if you look at the responsibility the responsible supervision that research integrity and supervision go hand in hand so uh, they they can make a difference in the prevention of QRPs because well you, as, a, as a PhD student uh, specifically as a starting PhD student you need to learn a lot still and uh, and 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 of course in the in the very complex research process you need someone who is guiding you to uh, through the process. Um, so the other, the other important one is that uh, that a supervisor needs to teach responsible research practices, needs to give the good example, and they are the good the exemplars for early career researchers. So, um, uh, so that uh, I consider responsible uh, uh, supervision. So make and then make it a little bit more concrete. Uh, so supervisors guide uh, it's, it's the supervisor guides the PhD student in all phases of the research process. It gives feedback. It stimulates a reflective stance. Uh, it helps PhD students to develop develop as an independent researcher. In, here in the Netherlands, you have four years, and after those four years of uh, supervision, but also a lot of other learning uh, uh, things and. and and publishing research, you are considered an independent researcher. You can, so you can do research by yourself. Um, it uh, it communi communicates transparently about the expectations of the PhD students, and even uh, vice versa. That a a PhD student can a, a can a convey a can talk about the, the expectations they have from their supervisor. It's about integrity and reliability. It's about empowerment. Marietta just gave a beautiful talk about this. How important important empowerment is and how many different um, uh, dimensions empowerment has and it is certainly one of the uh, key elements of supervision as well. Uh, it, uh, a, a supervisor aspires trustworthy and valid research. It helps students solve their problems, mostly research related, um, not always uh, personally, personal uh, 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 personal uh, things related, and it's teaching by example. And what is then a, a, the difference between a supervisor and a mentor? I think that's also good to highlight because um, ideally you, you cannot be both. You cannot be both a mentor and a supervisor. So a supervisor is, um, is more focusing on the research process and uh, a mentor is focusing a little bit more on a personal level. But the mentor is also ex extremely important because it's about professional and personal development of a PhD student. And, it, and, and, and a mentor is considered a personal guy. Uh, it's, it's more like a coach uh, uh, in, in all the uh, more personal parts of the research process. And it also it has a good eye on mental health. And of course, it, it, sometimes these roles co are, are combined or sometimes a supervisor is a little bit more like a mentor and sometimes a mentor is a little bit more like a supervisor but it's good to make this distinction because that's that you can communicate well to the PhD students when it is the responsibility of the supervisor and when you should uh, go to the mentor uh, uh, to discuss your the issues that you want to discuss with uh, with uh, the, the, your senior uh, uh, colleague. And then, of course, you have uh, uh, research leaders, and I think you, you tend to forget how important a research leader is in conveying re uh, responsible research or research integrity. It has a leading role, and there's so many research done on how important the, the research leader is and how much influence a research leader has on the whole research culture, uh, on the norms and the uh, values of a department. So it is really a role model that uh, people are looking at, uh, specifically in hierarchical 
uh, situations, people are looking at the uh, at the research leader. Uh, it is it is uh, it, it can implement specific guidelines on on their departments on on a institutional level. So a research leader has a lot of uh, influence there as well, and it also is is fostering awareness and appreciation of research integrity. But again, um, you are dependent of leadership styles, and some styles are are are, are can can um, can convey responsible research so much better than um, uh, than others. So I, I just gave two uh, the, the spectrum of leadership styles. On the one hand, you have the more autocratic leader, and the other one is more like a democratic and a, uh, a, a leading by example a leader, um, and they do have an influence and. That's also something that we touch upon uh, in this talk. So again, why is it important? Um, um, and this is a figure I, 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 some of you may have seen this already. And I think that I, I, it clearly uh, underlines how important a, su a supervision is, uh, basically, because it is a long road. Research, doing research is, not, is, is complex, it's not easy, and you need to take a lot of different steps. Um, it's, of course, it starts with an idea or an hypothesis or an aim of what do you want to study, but then you need to design, then you need funding, then you need approval, then you need to write uh, uh, data analysis plans or data management plans, then you, and then uh, and you need uh, approval from a medical ethic committee. Um, um, then you have to do the experiment, then you collect the data, then you analyze it, you do a secondary analysis, hopefully you ask a, a statistician to help you a little bit with the analysis, you start writing, uh, then you, in the meantime you, you continuously collaborate with your co-authors about the whole research process, but also about the writing, and then eventually you uh, have the uh, opportunity to, to submit it, of course. But the submission is definitely not the end of your research process, because then it starts the, the, uh, uh, the difficulty uh, uh, sometimes, because you first think, well, my research is beautiful, it should be submitted to nature because nature will be interested in this. But of course, well, after a, a, a quick desk rejection from nature said, well, it's not, it's not something that we want to publish. So you submit it again and you get rejected and you submit it again and get rejected. Finally, you reach, uh, you have uh, a, an editor who's really, who likes the research uh, and thinks it's good. So they send it out for peer review. There are reviewers that are extremely harsh on you. You have to revise it, have to rewrite it again and then you have this final publication and the satisfaction about this very long and tiring process. Why I'm showing you this and telling you this is of course that you cannot do it by yourself and specifically PhD students when you do this for the first time you need guidance in every step of this research process and therefore a supervisor is so important because it can go wrong I mean it's so complex so if you have the right guidance you can make, you can make these steps and finally you will be there but but therefore supervision is essential um, and if we look, and we did uh, several studies here in Amsterdam uh, uh, on, on the, the occurrence of research misbehaviors, and we have a top 60 that we send out to researchers, but also the research integrity experts, um, and ask them, hey, what do you think is the most impactful uh, research misbehavior? And in both studies, the, the first and foremost uh, research misbehavior that is um, that is highlighted there is the uh, the insufficiently supervised or mentored junior co-workers. Um, so we have, uh, I hope I can highlight here that how important supervision is uh, in the whole research process and how, uh, and how much emphasis we should put on supervision to make it a, uh, to make research uh, m more trustworthy and reliable and, and make research, res uh, to create responsible research, engage in responsible research practices. So, um, and it's not only the research process by itself, it's also navigating through the research process or the publication process with, um, and I, I always use this figure, and I still, after, after 10 years, I still like this figure, um, because it's, it's me, the bold guy, uh, and wanting to publish my beautiful research, 
and there are a lot of people that that are going to critically uh, uh, give feedback on my research to improve it, of course. But you can uh, you cannot succeed if you are, are have bad luck. You 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 are just unsuccessful. You cannot publish your paper. So that's why you also need a supervisor who can guide you a little bit and give you the right example and the right expectations in the research process. So. Um, uh, with this introduction, I I'm, I'm want to highlight several studies that we did here in Amsterdam, and I'm very proud to, uh, to, uh, to discuss them with you, because uh, it has been a, uh, a lot of um, um, uh, thinking and, uh, in the, uh, and, and a, a lot of uh, great uh, uh, talented researchers. Uh, di we did it, this together. So first, I'm going to zoom into what can individuals do, uh, and, and I'm going to talk about the results of the superb supervision course, what can institutions do, I'm going to talk about the guidelines that we have created and we're currently implementing in, in research institutions, and what should the system of science do, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about the recognize and reward supervision in the, uh, in, the, in the new criteria, how we should reward and how we should promote researchers and what criteria should we use there. So first of all, I'm going to zoom briefly into the superb supervision course. Um, uh, recently, uh, uh, Tamarinda Haven and I and, and, and colleagues, we uh, published a preprint about this course and about the potential uh, 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 impact of this course. So what we, what we did, we designed a three-day training uh, program and where, where we combined the, uh, the research integrity tools with soft skills, because we think Think that they really are. They they are. They need. To, they need each other because you can. Of course, you can have tools, but you also need the soft skills to make these tools uh, a part of the research behavior of your uni or co-workers. And therefore, you have to train supervisors how they can improve their supervision skills, both the soft skills, but also the research integrity skills. Uh, what we did is that we send out a survey with a specific rescue rescue questionnaire. It's not validated yet. Uh, but uh, it, it measures the impact of uh, supervision, I mean both supervisors, but also in PhD students. And I think it's 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 beautiful uh, to uh, to also measure the impact on PhD students because that's that's why we are uh, why we want to improve supervision. Of course, uh, we did an evaluation a survey, and we also did a, some a, a couple of focus groups to see how uh, the co course is perceived by the participants. Um, so just getting a little bit more into the details of, of both the soft skills and the uh, research integrity tools, uh, what we teach uh, the, uh, the participants is uh, rigorous methods, of course, pre-registration, data analysis plans, publication plans, preprints, open science practices, navigating through research integrity dilemmas. Those were more the, like the research integrity skills that you learn in the course. And the soft skills are more like, hey, how can I become a better listener to my PhD students? How can I ask questions? better? How can I build confidence in my PhD student or in my junior co-worker? How can I discuss expectation? How can I provide feedback? How can I lead my, uh, the, the research team or the research process with my PhD student? But on the other hand, how can I foster autonomy in my PhD student and become a role model for them? Um, and sometimes give strokes and strikes or carrots and sticks. Um, I, th I, th I think and we, we go into a little bit more detail there. I think of of course, we do. There's a there's shortage of strokes in uh, academia, and that's because we always have a critical stance. But I think that we should make uh, uh, make strokes more, more, getting more important. People, and specifically PhD students who are starting their re research, sometimes they need more strokes. They also need some strikes, or uh, uh, occasionally a stick, but mostly they need carrots or strokes. Um, um, and this is, uh, I, I'm not sure whether you can see this well, but uh, this, is, uh, this is a brief outline of the course where we, uh, where we have this three-day program and we are really combining both those soft skills with role-playing, for example, but also with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with exercises to increase your, your, how you can ask questions or how you can listen better or how you can discuss feedback or, or expectation with your PhD student. But on the other hand, also go into the, uh, in, into 
the details of open science practices or pre-registrations or preprints. So uh, this is the three-day course. Uh, so what are the results? Uh, we in total we included uh, uh, 21 supervisors and their PhD students, uh, mostly biomedical. Uh, we we uh, we we found a higher rating of supervision skills in in both the supervisor but also measured in the PhD students. Uh, and there's a and 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 the uh, in the uh, the participants really felt that there is an important bridge to, uh, to to make between research integrity and those interpersonal or those uh, soft skills uh, that is that is considered essential. Um, of course, uh, please uh, bear with me. This is just a pilot study, right? Um, so uh, 21 supervisors, you think, hey, that's not a lot. That's true. Uh, it is a pilot study, and but we are happy that we could implement this course and now in several institutions in the Netherlands, and there's interest to, to, to do this course and also in the other countries. And I hope that we can make, uh, that we can create more research on this uh, to see w what is the effectiveness and uh, how, how, how can we make this training more efficient. Um, some, uh, some other things that we learned is that we, um, um, uh, we, I think it's very important to measure the impact of the recipient of the, of, the, of the supervision. So not only measure the impact of the supervisor, but also measure the impact of the training on students uh, uh, because they are the ultimate target of supervision. And all, although making it mandatory li like this course, we briefly talked about this in, uh, uh, in the discussion with uh, with uh, Professor Bauter uh, in uh, after the, after the, in discussing with uh, Marietta, um, I think making it mandatory may f feel like a way forward, but it's also very co complex to make it mandatory because then you. Um, then you make then then you well then then for the for the non-believers sometimes I don't think that these kind of courses are are completely justified and that they are, ha, really have this uh, growth mindset to become a better re, uh, supervisor if you make it mandatory. So and that's that was also perceived by the participants that the, uh, um, the uh, 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 that they don't think that making it mandatory is the best implementation strategy. So. That's about the individual level. And then we go to the institutional level, and we we briefly talk about the sops 4 i project. Uh, it's not the mo the nicest name, but uh, it is a a, a, a well. Um, it, it, it's a little bit weird to say uh, from my perspective, but I think we do a lot of. We, we have created a lot in this uh, project and, and we have uh, and we're trying to make a, a difference here for institutions so we, we, we always tend to focus on the individual but this project is really focusing on improving and fostering a responsible conduct of research in institutions and therefore we have we've, we're both focusing on research performing organizations RPOs like universities or institutions and research funding organizations. And today we're talking about supervision, and one of the core topics in the uh, in the toolbox of the SOPS for, uh, of the SOPS for I project is, uh, of course, supervision. Um, and I, uh, well, not of course, but that it is supervision. And I would like to highlight today some of the guidelines that we have created uh, in uh, in uh, in this pro in this process. And it's an iterative process with several empirical steps uh, before we ended uh, before we came to the co-creation workshop. So we collected already a lot of evidence on supervision as a starting point to create those uh, guidelines. Um, um, and so about the methods specifically focusing co-creation workshops, uh, there's a uh, 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 extensive preparation, as I said, with uh, several empirical steps. There's a uh, then we did the co-creation workshops. I briefly zoom into this a little bit in more detail, and I'm also very happy and refer. I'm happy to also to refer to Krishma Labib, who will uh, talk about uh, a little bit more about the, re the, the guidelines for uh, research institutions uh, from a training perspective in, in today in the afternoon so please um, uh, 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 I, I can really uh, encourage you to to look at that presentation as well um, 
Uh, so it, it, those co-creation workshops with international experts in the field, we did it online uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, and, um, and after that, we have special working groups for guideline refinement. Um, the results are that we had uh, the included a, a total of 12 international uh, supervision experts uh, that participated in four different uh, uh, co-creation workshops. We created a, uh, a guidelines for three core topics uh, within the supervision topic uh, that, were, that were PhD guidelines uh, for supervision, superv uh, supervisors guidelines for supervision, and, uh, and uh, 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 creating and leading an effective team, so for research leaders. Um, this, this resulted in a total of 14 key recommendations. I'm going to zoom into this a little bit in, in, in more detail in a minute. Um, and currently we are uh, in, a, in a pilot testing phase, how we can uh, implement those guidelines and how we can improve and finalize those guidelines that they will be uh, eventually uh, the end product of uh, the SOPS for I, one of the end products of the SOPS for I project. So what uh, so uh, uh, what did, what did we learn? I will come back to that in a minute. So just briefly uh, highlighting what is exactly this co-creation workshop process. It is it's also a little bit of a buzzword right now. But the the, the key thing of, of co-creation is that you create together with experts uh, 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 new content for guidelines. So it's not only hey what is the current evidence and let's let's get together, but it's also evoking new thoughts and ideas about how, how what is important for supervision and we first that was like the opening and a diverging perspective and then after those workshops uh, two workshops more like really evoking new ideas about supervision and then uh, after uh, two workshops that are more like content refinement hey with those new ideas what are the essentials what are the most important recommendations that we have for institutions how they can improve uh, 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 research uh, uh, integrity guidelines for supervision so what we learned uh, is that institutions can do much more uh, in the supervision uh, uh, in, in the for the topic supervision and not make it only solely a, uh, a individual responsibility. Uh, uh, guidelines can really make a difference to make researchers aware of the impact of supervision and uh, uh, supervision skills should be rewarded and recognized. That's something, uh, although you should you should be aware of too much bureaucracy is not good. Um, uh, it, it is important that uh, that supervision skills and uh, should also be rewarded because that ha can help researchers um, uh, in um, uh, in in putting more emphasis and putting more interest in in supervision itself. And then finally, uh, guideline creation is fun. It may, may, for some, it may sound a little bit uh, boring, but I think in this process, with talking with uh, experts and trying to evoke new thoughts and ideas, it's a very creative way of finding the es essence and, and the, the essence of uh, supervision. So what came out of it, uh, I already talked about the three subtopics or the three topics that were, were deemed most important in supervision. The key recommendation for PhD uh, guidelines is create PhD trajectory guidelines specifically focusing on supervision, provide training and support. Uh, for example, training how to deal, how to how to uh, deal and regulate your supervisors, how to promote, uh, also promote a written record uh, of agreement, and provide independent bodies to consult. And that can be about uh, mental health of uh, of your PhD students, but it can also be about peer support. How how can you create a a structure that your your PhD students get to know each other and can learn from each other. Uh, and the supervisor guidelines, they are, are slightly similar. So, so a, a institution, you have to take in, mind, take in mind the institution, and on an institutional level, you want to know the requirements for supervision. And this is, so the create supervision policies and guidelines is really about can you communicate well what are the requirements for supervision? Uh, you provide supervision training, um, uh, you stimulate positive interaction with supervisees, and you recognize and reward good supervision. So in concrete, how can you make this uh, concrete? Is uh, that you, uh, that's for the PhD, you may have guidelines for responsible research practice, you can evaluate your supervisors, you make written agreements, how to deal with supervisors, organize peer support, attention for mental health, 
community building, all those is in the PhD guidelines and in the supervisor guidelines. You can you have a supervisor manual how you can uh, allocate time and task for supervision, peer support, training, evaluation of PhD collaborations and recognition and award structures are important. And then finally, it's about leading an effective team. It's about stipulating responsibilities of research leaders, support research leaders, provide time and guidance and resources, provide leadership training. So this is also very important that you can, uh, it, supervision is also about creating the right uh, mindset in leaders that they, that they find supervision as important as, uh, um, as, uh, as, it, it, as it actually is. So um, this, in short, uh, are the guidelines, and they, the, the guidelines in their current forms are already online. So please visit the website of the Subscribe Project, and you can have a uh, you can have a look at, uh, at at those almost ready guidelines to to get more in depth uh, uh, knowledge on it, but also to see some best practices because we link, try to link them with best practices. So again, uh, finally, before I will uh, round uh, it off, I would like to m give um, uh, some, some considerations to this study. It's a, it's a fairly old study, but I still really like it uh, uh, to talk about this. It, it is about how can you make uh, uh, your supervision more successful. And I think it's a responsibility of an institution, as I talked, but also of uh, of PhD, both the supervisor and the PhD student. And in this qualitative research uh, uh, conducted in uh, Maastricht, they really d dove into this and found, hey, what are the, what can you do as a PhD student and what can you do as a supervisor? And they have, they, they created 10, out of, the re out, out, of, out of this qualitative research, they distilled uh, 10 golden rules for PhD candidates. And you can find them here. And if you look at them well, it's about discussing expectations about uh, about autonomy about empowerment it's about that you are the captain of of the ship as a PhD candidate and the supervisor is not the captain of the ship you are, it's your uh, eventually it's your PhD thesis it is it is your ship and uh, the the supervisor is is the navigator and is really helping you is the guide but it but but it is your project and you have to be very aware of this so you have to take this responsibility and this role as well uh, and you could do so much more so um, uh, I really would like to emphasize this uh, this uh, this uh, this study and and if you are a PhD candidate go uh, go look it up uh, it's uh, it's online and I will provide a link uh, in my in my slides as well um, and the same goes for um, um, uh, for supervisors here here it are some it's it may sound a little bit basic but it is so important and on number one it's it, they say hey get to know your PhD candidate or your PhD student as a person because it's so important if you have a good interaction with your student uh, then you can uh, to, uh, then you can do so much more then you can give more e e more uh, then you can provide feedback more easily then you can empower them more then you can give them strokes more often then you can also uh, discuss the problems that are that are currently there so but therefore you have to know and you have to build confidence and you have to uh, build a uh, a, uh, a relationship, like a personal relationship with your students, because that's uh, it, th that makes collaboration so much easier, and that makes it more transparent. And then you can uh, and then you can then you can discuss so much more in a supervision. And of course, it's you don't have to become friends. I mean, there's always a hierarchical a difference uh, in in supervision, but you can do so much more to make this this the, the supervision and in your relationship with your student work. Um, um, uh, well, uh, supervision, if, if I talk about this, then it sounds like, and yeah, of course, it sounds like parenting. And I think to a certain extent, uh, uh, supervision is a little bit like parenting. And it's unfortunately that uh, Lex is already getting here 
to, uh, to ask me uh, some additional questions. But I think I, I, I just would like to highlight this because I think it helps you to use this metaphor in your students. And of course, it, they, they are not your kids as a supervisor and you shouldn't treat them as your kids. But there are similarities that are helpful because for parenting, and these are just 10, 10, top 10 tips for good parenting, uh, it's, it's, it's building a relationship. It's about, well, we talked about carrots and sticks. It's important that you don't, uh, um, uh, I think it's uh, somewhere here, well, yeah, here, that you cannot spank your, 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 your kids. Well, of, of course, very important. You cannot do that with your PhD student as well. But it, is, it has a lot of, it, it's about the carrots, right? You want to give them as much carrots as possible. And sometimes you need a, you need a, 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 a stick, for, figuratively speaking. Um, so I think ha having this method, using this metaphor in, your, uh, in, in if you reflect on your, your relationship with your PhD student, I definitely don't want to encourage you to become a parent of your PhD student. No, that's not, that's not my point. My point is that it helps you if you get to know your uh, PhD student a little bit better, then, uh, then there are some similarities that can help you in how you want to raise your PhD student to a certain degree. And therefore, you need to show them what is good behavior and what is bad behavior. And it's the same for research. You have to know what good research is and what bad research is. And that's something that you have to teach them as a supervisor. So um, uh, um, we can do we can do much better, and these are my ultimate slide before we go back to my take home messages. Uh, we can, on the individual level, we can teach supervisors to become better supervisors and that to become better uh, uh, guider, uh, uh, guides for, for PhD students, and therefore, you need it, you, it takes two to tango, so you need to build a relationship with them. You can, institutions can use guidelines to improve and, and the awareness for good supervision or responsible supervision. And, uh, uh, and finally, and this is very important, and this is still, these are still in it, it's in its infancy, but, but in, the different, in the new structures of recognition and rewards, there is more emphasis on supervision. And I think it's very important because this may stimulate researchers to invest in supervision skills as well. And it's, it's since, uh, since they have so much impact on responsible research, I think it's a very good development that we use this, uh, uh, this in the in future recognition and reward criteria. So um, um, there we go back to the take home messages. How can we make academia better? Of course, with responsible supervision. And I hope I, can, I have inspired you today uh, a little bit how we can do that. There are certainly a lot of possibilities to do that. You can do more than you think. Uh, we have to give the good example. Now, if I was a PhD student, but now I'm a supervisor. And, I, and it's, a, it's, it's, a, um, it's work in progress always. And it's not something that's going to stop you. You can improve as a supervisor and you need to develop in, as a supervisor. And therefore, a growth, method, a growth mindset is essential uh, and supervision is a, a pivotal for in conveying research integrity and institutions can do a lot. I would like to end before I give the, the floor, uh, the, the, not the microphone, but the word back to uh, Professor Bouter. Don't forget supervision is a lot of fun and it really, it really, if you invest in good supervision, I assure you that the fun will come. Well, thank you so much, Yuri, for this engaging and enthusiastic lecture and for your plea for responsible supervision. Uh, we, we do have an, an, a number of interesting questions, but please go ahead, uh, you at home behind your desk, if you have more, we can use one or two more. Uh, Chris Malabib has an interesting question for you, Yuri. She says, well, you explained that supervision and mentoring is different, different roles. Uh, so what should institutions do? Should they allocate not only a supervisor to a PhD student, but also a mentor? And thinking more closely, should every mentor not also be a little bit of a supervisor and the other way around? Yeah, yeah I think this is an, this is an important question. And uh, in an ideal situation, 
uh, this is this is actually what we, what some departments do. So they have the supervisor that's more engaged in the research process, and they have a mentor on a different department, and that's just like a a, a, a helpful uh, a person who's taking this mentor role, and that can only be a meeting once a month or once every two months, uh, if there are problems with your in your relationship with your supervisor of course so it a mentor does can help in navigating better if if the relationship with your supervisor is not well so that's one thing that a mentor can really be beneficial and the other thing is that uh, we know and that's another dear topic of mine that mental health problems exist in academia and specifically in in in, your, in early career research there's a lot of pressure on them and sometimes it is not the task and, it, and the supervisor is not equipped to talk about these issues so easily because it also affect, may affect their hierarchical relationship. So therefore, a mentor can also do a lot of extras. But having said this, this is the ideal situation and it is not always feasible to organize this in the department. I mean, um, that, that is a lot of work and uh, the, it, since supervision is not rewarded so much and mentorship is not rewarded uh, uh, neither. So it's going to be a hard not to crack, uh, I think, uh, currently at, uh, at the uh, Department of Yeah. One, one, one thing I would like to, I, I just showed this slide, and I forgot, uh, forgot to do this, but um, uh, and sorry, sorry, but I w really would like to, re research and what we presented today is a team effort. And here I, I just say, I just want to highlight the, my, my dear colleagues who did a lot of work. Uh, we did this really together, uh, and I, I probably forget uh, some researchers here as well, but I think it's really important that the things that we presented, that I presented today, is really a team effort. Yeah. Uh, talking about teams, you say ideally you get a mentor and a supervisor as PhD student. Um, in, in the Netherlands, we now, all universities have mandated that a, a supervising team of PhD students should have at least two persons, up to four. Well, what are your views on that? Because these people might have different opinions, be pulling in different directions. Yeah. Wouldn't they make the problems bigger instead of uh, uh, smaller? Well, I, no, I think, I, I think it's a beautiful, well, if we, if we look at the ultimate goal is to, to uh, of course, to create uh, responsible research, uh, but also to develop as a researcher, to, make, to create a, a person, a, a, an independent researcher. And I think it's, you need different styles and you need different role models, or, or at least supervisors that can help you, because you have to look at them as well. And some things you learn from one supervisor Supervisor and some things you learn from another supervisor. And well, we have uh, supervised uh, together, uh, 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 Lex, and I think it's a beautiful combination because some things they really learn from you that I cannot give them, and some th things they learn from me that you are um, and maybe a little bit less focused on. So I think it's it's a great way to to become a more uh, 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 to 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 build build your qualities and build your uh, your your skills as a researcher as a junior researcher. Yeah. Another issue, um, Tamarinda Haven is raising that, um, you, you, you plead for use of the, the guidelines from the standard operating procedures on, on, on supervision, but, but how can um, an, an average supervisor know that these things exist? What, what, what is the idea? How, how do you bring them in contact with that? Yeah, well, this is this is a actually a really good, but a, a really good question, but also a difficult question. And of course, it starts with awareness, uh, with a research leader that is actually focusing, emphasizing research integrity first, that knows about the existence of these guidelines. And of course, there's, these are, are very early guidelines, and and now it's it's, get, it's getting to develop, and we're trying to implement it and to give it as much noise as possible. We already talked about briefly about the embassy. I mean, so. Uh, the embassy can 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 give uh, information about it. Can 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 be a good uh, a good platform to uh, to spread the word. And it's uh, it, it is it's also a matter of uh, um, uh, of 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 time. I mean, now we think it's it, this is very important. 
uh, and, and ho let's hope that in 10 years uh, it, it's becoming uh, mainstream. So I think this is still in its uh, infancy um, if we look at guidelines for supervision. Uh, it's new, so uh, we, have to, we have to join forces and, and make, this, m make them visible as much as possible. Yeah. And maybe we should broadcast your lecture in prime time on television. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, well. But any day, uh, um, Doreen, Doreen van der Schot, the Andrian coordinator, she asks a question. She says, well, um, what has all this to do with how we e evaluate, how we assess um, staff in academia? Uh, is, is there a role there as well to, to improve uh, supervision and supervisors and draw attention to that in, in a positive way? Yeah. Yeah, this, I think this, is, this, this, uh, this alludes to the fact that we want to make them criteria in, in recognition and rewards, right? That we, that we not only look at, well, this is, it's, it's already quite old school, at least in our fields, to only look at publications. Of course, publications, the number of publications and impact factors, they have a certain role, but there are other important qualities. And it starts with emph putting emphasis on these qualities as well. And that's, it, it, it starts at the it, institutional and departmental level. If we focus on, uh, on at, at least try to measure it, right? To have some measurement instruments, hey, this supervisor is, uh, is good. Um, uh, and that the department knows that the supervisor is good that is really uh, putting emphasis I mean that's that's at least a start there are of course awards for good supervision is something that can help um, so we have to make it more visible in the on the departmental level and that's it's not easy but uh, but there are a lot of tools already uh, to do that Final question, and you've seen this coming. W what about a license to supervise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so weird that we need a license for about everything, including yeah. teaching in universities. Why not a license for the most important thing you do as part of the academic staff in, in academia? Uh, and, and shouldn't we also have uh, ways to withdraw the license when someone really misperforms? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, the, the two thoughts. Uh, I, th I think I, I, kn I know that it, it, that you are a fan of uh, of some sort of license. And I think it would be a beautiful way because then you uh, you you also select right because it's not it's not per se necessary that you have to be a good supervisor right. You ha if you have other qualities and you don't want to engage too much in supervision, I think that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, but we can really it, it, a license will help. Um, also, students to choose uh, where you want, who you want to get, uh, from whom you want to get supervision, um, and a license. Then at least there are some 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 rules or some standard about hey, this is at least this supervisor is at least bringing this and has a focus in a supervision on this. So a license would be really helpful. But then again, um, it, it then then it becomes uh, almost mandatory because if it's part of the criteria, people really want to get. This license, and there's so there's uh, but uh, there's a lot of buts uh, in this uh, uh, in in the, uh, there there are problems in in implementing a license, but the idea is beautiful. The how to execute it, I'm not sure, but the idea is beautiful, and I would be happy. Well, if, if I would be happy to. Uh, to uh, organize a ceremony for, for, uh, for, for people that get the license. Well, that's a nice offer. Yeah. Well, well, thank you again, Yuri, um, and thank you for your presentation and your open answers to, to all these questions.